Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Good afternoon. This is your this is Katrina May. Well, host of Tampa Home Talk with Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We are delighted to be bringing you a show live this afternoon out of our Land Lakes office. We have partnered with Salita's House, nonprofit, U.S. certified HUD counseling agency, to put on a home buyer workshop. It's a two part workshop that's two Saturdays in a row here in our office. We had a great day today, but about 10 or 12 people in our class and just some awesome information that they brought today. And if you are thinking about buying a home and you haven't had the chance to look into any type of down payment assistance, homeowner education, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you connect with us on our website, Tampa Home Talk on Facebook or Twitter at Tampa Home Talk. And we'll be glad to partner you up with Salita's House so that you can attend one of these workshops as well. They put them on every month. I also have with me today, Sarah Crickey with Silverton Mortgage. She's been around forever. She's our regular show partner, Linder, and she attended the class today as well with IEXA. What do you think about her? She puts on a great class, doesn't she? She's wonderful. She, she did a great job. Extremely entertaining. She comes with a lot of passion, a lot of energy, and just she is a real pleasure to just listen to and be around. I, I can do this stuff in my sleep and even not as entertained information and it was all valuable information so i took some notes just because i'm a little bit jaded and i thought you know what what are really great questions that people are asking during the show so that i could kind of tell you the listener what some of those things are because i know they're the questions that people ask every day when they go to home and i don't think about them because we can do them in our sleep right sarah yeah, we, we take that for granted because we do it every day. But there are a lot of a- apprehensions out there as far as what I need to do to get a home loan. Um, what's the process for buying a home? Right. So I thought it was interesting that she opened the day with secured versus unsecured assets and debt. Um, so let's talk about the difference between secured versus unsecured. So she used the analogy regarding, obviously, when you get a mortgage, it's secured by your home, right? If you don't pay, you don't stay. The old correct. analogy. That's so correct. your unsecured debt is going to be things like your credit card and that type of stuff. And, and some of the people mentioned with regards to the housing bubble that we had and essentially people that are, you know, they cashed out their home. Essentially, they took money out of their house and they paid off all this debt. They started over for another 30 years. And a lot of those people actually lost their home. So I like the fact that she started the home buyer workshop today from that place so that people can really understand the difference between not only secured but unsecured debt and why it's important to keep that stuff at bay and and really just set you up to succeed, which is why I'm really, really glad to partner with them. you have any thoughts on that, Sarah? I mean, you're exactly right. When the housing bubble occurred, people were taking equity lines on their property. They were using the equity that they had to go on vacations, to buy recreational vehicles, to to, to spend however they, they wanted to and not necessarily to put it back into their home. So, you know, a lot of these folks are upside down right now for that reason. And they're having to go into the special government relief programs and the heart programs in order to try to save their mortgages and and try to bail themselves out. And it's not pretty. We actually have a client that's coming to our office this afternoon because I want to connect them directly with IEXA. And it was Mm -hmm. a a listing appointment that I actually went on earlier in the week. And I I know a lot of agents would have immediately just had them sign the the paperwork for a listing, do it as a short sale and just run with it. But here I'm looking at this family, and they have three kids just like me. And I swear the kids are similar ages. And I just look at them, and I'm like, so what do you want to do? I always start from that place. Do you want, what's your intention? Do you want to keep your home? Are you wanting to just sell it and get out from under it and hit the reset button and start over? And he's like, no, well, you know, this is the only home that our kids have ever known. So if we could keep it, I'd really like to. But they go through this process with, uh, we'll just nickname them BOA. And they're one of the larger lenders out there. And they essentially have been beat to death with regards to a modification. So they kind of hit this brick wall where they feel like... 
exhausted. Yeah, they're exhausted. And it's, mm-hmm. it's impossible to, to make this happen. So we're going to partner somebody like that with Solita's House because they also do debt counseling and modifications and Set them up counseling. on a plan. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to give it one last ditch effort to see if they can help them save their house and get it modified. This, the back payments are huge, so they're going to have their work cut out for them on that one for sure. It's still, it's still the best approach to take. It is. So some of the questions that we had from, from the people in the workshop today were one some one person asked is it better for me to buy a townhome or a home and it's a loaded question because there's a lot of details and they're very very different now obviously anybody could buy either as long as you're qualified for it Mm -hmm. but in my experience and I've been doing this for 22 years I find that a lot of people especially you know women like I've been married my husband forever but if I was single i probably would live in a townhome just because I don't mow the lawn. I don't take care of the pool. I don't want any of that yard maintenance. And sure. it's just a better avenue. Would you agree? I'd agree. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I, I have clients all the time that will toss the dice between a townhome or, or a small single family home. They don't want the maintenance right. and, and end up going with the townhome just because the neighborhood and the community is already taken care of. And some people automatically think, hey, oh, if I'm in a townhome, I'm automatically going to have extra fees because I have an HOA. And that's just, it's not the case. Uh, one of the things that I pointed out in the workshop today is you really have to compare apples to apples. So, for example, a lot of townhome, HOA type communities, they're going to have a lot of things built into that HOA fee. So, for example, it's probably going to cover the bulk of the homeowner's insurance, where if you're getting an an insurance policy on a single family home, Mm -hmm. that's going to be the bulk of your policy. And so it will cut your master policy. And a lot of times you only have to have just a contents policy, which is drywall in personal items, that kind of stuff. Drywall out, carpet fixtures, the Mm -hmm. interior, your personal belongings. Yep. And, and uh, the master policy will cover the roof and the exterior. That's the other thing too. They usually have an escrow reserve funds set Mm -hmm. aside Mm -hmm. that will replace the roof when it's old enough or when it needs to be painted and all of those things. Right. They're set up with a budget, and, and so they, they prepare for those types of things. And and frankly, you know, even with an HOA fee, you can go into some of the smaller homes or, or in any neighborhood, and a lot of neighborhoods have HOA fees on top of the fact that you're still paying paying for your full homeowner's policy and and you're you're, you're paying both. And I actually, we're going to talk about that a little later in the show after we get through a couple of other things, but the, I want to get into CDDs because a lot of people, especially if you're in Pinellas County, there's not a whole lot of CDDs there, but when you start venturing out into some of the other counties like Hillsboro and Pasco, and you're going to see CDDs and those are community development district fees. And in some instances, like with this market that we're in right now, I would almost rather see people have a CDD versus an HOA. And that's because your CDD is going to get paid in your tax bill. It's forced. Correct. Right. So you can't get delinquent on it. And I know you already know the answer to this, but what happens if someone's not an escrow, they don't have their taxes and insurance included, and they're paying their tax bill on their own and they don't pay it? Like, what happens to those? All kinds of things can go wrong. Well, you're thinking later, like three (laughs) years later. What I'm referring to is the like the county has their immediate budget, so those those tax bills have to get paid. They must. So they have people that purchase those tax certificates. Sure, they'll they'll issue a tax certificate on your home, and you can lose your home. Right after three years, they can actually start the foreclosure process. Absolutely, for just for just the amount of your tax certificate, even if your house is paid off. That's true. So it's just important things to pay attention. But the good thing about that is someone has already paid the tax bill. Now, you're going to have some interest and some fees associated with catching that up when you do pay it. Mm -hmm. However, the good part about that is if you are one of the people in these neighborhoods that are paying your fees and your dues and your HOA fees on time, you're not somebody that's walked away and handed the keys to the bank or, you know, you're living there for five years without a payment, which is some of the crazy stuff that we're seeing in this market. Essentially, you have the option to take control of that because if... So if you live in a community where you th- so you don't have CDDs, but you have HOA fees, mm-hmm. and there's people not paying those HOA fees, what's going to happen is they either have to impose special assessments mm-hmm. or they can raise the HOA fees to, to offset the budget. Right. I mean, they have a budget and they have right. things they have to pay for, like community maintenance, the lawn, the pool, any of those things that have to be paid. Like, And some of these HOAs have taken it down to bare bones. I mean, I've seen them strip their budget as low as they can. And in some neighborhoods, like... 
Grand Hampton for a while. Like it was such a running joke because the HOA was literally sending out a letter saying, hey, be a good neighbor. Just take care of your, your neighbor's lawn, you know, and here it's this master plan community. But it's a great example of, you know, if you have more of those fees built into a CDD versus an HOA. Well, CDD communities are typically really well maintained. Some are gated communities, some are not, but they're, they're, they're landscaped, they're kept very nice and neat, and, and a lot of the CDD neighborhoods also have an HOA. And, and you, you, so you have to right. check. We have some like uh, Japri Lakes, for example, their HOA. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. What is it like 80 or hundred bucks a year? Mm-hmm. It's something pretty cheap. It's a year. It's mm-hmm. not even a month. Sure. So most of their community maintenance fees are built into mm-hmm. the CDD, which is a good thing because that neighborhood started, I want to say around 04, 05, mm-hmm. 05, 06, 04, 05. Right. And so you'd have a lot of people just empty in those neighborhoods and it, it doesn't help the neighborhood at all. Wilderness Lake preserves another example. In yes. Panda Lake. Same thing. So we're going to talk about um, the next part, which Aixa went into the four C's of credit. Mm -hmm. And I think those are really important points to talk on. And she goes into a lot of detail. I mean, it's a full two Saturdays. So you're talking about 16 hours of homebuyer workshop madness. But they talk about the capital, which is your income, your savings, and just, you know, the money that you're going to use to repay that mortgage when you get one. Your credit which has to be at a certain standard. We're time on that in a minute, Sarah. Mm-hmm. You also have to have a capacity to repay the loan. You have to have the ability, not only mental capacity, but you also have to have, you know, the physical ability to pay it. You have to have a, a debt ratio that's in line in order to do that. And the collateral, which in this state, there's uh, there's tide th- title theory versus lien theory. And we're a lien theory state. So that means we get our deed right away. We just have this little thing called a mortgage that attaches along with it that is your collateral Mm -hmm. so you want to talk about credit because i know that's always a biggie people always ask like what kind of credit score do i have to have to buy a home and what do i need and how much credit do i need well i mean it's different for every program i'll give you the short version for for a, a fannie mae conventional purchase you can go down to a 620 credit score um Ideally, you want a higher score. The interest rates can really fluctuate in a conventional loan based on your credit score. Government loans uh, are a little bit more flexible where credit score is concerned. They don't have as many adjustments for rate if your score is a little low. Um, 640 is their magic number. Anything over that is just going to be uh, uh, an attribute to the interest rate that you get. Um, and you're, this is Sarah Crickey. She's my guest today here on Tampa Home Talk. Uh, this is Katrina Madewell, your host. We have to take a quick break in just a minute, but when we come back, we're going to dive into a little bit more of some of those details on credit. We're going to dive into what score you need for what program and just talk a little bit about those things. And then we're going to get into some of the expenses that you need when you actually go in to buy a home. So stick around and we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're really delighted to have in studio today Salita's house. They put on our home buyer workshop here at Orlando Lakes office. And Aixa, Antonio Autonomous, is going to be sharing with you in a few minutes. But as promised right before the break, I said that we would chime in a little bit on scores and programs and just kind of give them a general idea. I know it can be flex and we can work with people to fix those scores and drag them up a little bit. But let's talk about in general, like what's the general guidelines say you have to have what score for what program? The general guideline for a government loan is going to be a 640 credit score. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't lend with a lower score. It's just going to make your process smoother. Um, ideally, you'd like to have higher than a 640 credit score. Um, Salita's House will work with the client to get them there. Um, and, and Silverton Mortgage has a great program called Silverton Secure. What we do is we underwrite your loan completely before, you ever to, you know, before you've ever chosen a home. We've got that entire process done for you so that once you find the home, you can be excited about the home and not stressed out about the mortgage buying process. I want to chime on what you're saying because I don't know that the average person would really pick up on what you just said. And what she's saying is 
essentially they're going to start the process just like you you already found a home and they're going to pre-underwrite you. We're not going to start it like a typical bank mortgage broker would. What When you have a contract and now you're ready to go, we're actually going to go through all of those steps with you in advance. You're, you're, you're going to get a full approval, not just a pre-approval. So once you find the right home, we're getting that home appraised. We're getting the title work for that property and you're going to close. So it's not going to be a lengthy, dramatic process. We're going to overcome any issue, if at all. And we're going to do that in advance for you. And that's nice because there's not a lot of lenders that do that. And I, I have to say I'm very proud um, to be affiliated with Silverton and to have them as one of our show partners. And We, we want to be three steps ahead of the game. The, the, the closing date is we follow that like a Bible. We want to be ahead of your closing date. We don't want your closing delayed. We want everyone to be pleased with the transaction. So anything that we can do up front, we will do up front. And I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day in the middle of a move to hang out with us today in a home buyer work. Up it was my pleasure. I learned a lot myself. I mean, I've been doing this for a number of years, but you get to meet new new folks. And Salita's house is awesome. I learned a whole lot, and I can't wait to attend another one. All right. Without further ado, let's introduce Miss Aixa Antonio Thomas. Hello. Thank you for being my guest again on Tampa Home Talk. Not a problem. I'm so excited, like always, to see you. You are just, you just rock the house. You come in with like this energy and I just vibrate off you every time I'm in the room with you. And I think people feel that you're genuine at heart. You have a love for home ownership, just like me. I do. I do. And, you know, I think those are those kindred spirits that just happen to to blend. Um, I will tell you what, I'm in love with Sarah and the fact that she is three steps ahead of the game. Always. No other lender. I think there's only one more that does that. So that's golden. For listeners, I I don't understand how important it is that you understand that you're going to get underwritten before you find a house. Do you know how many hurdles you avoid? Oh, my gosh. I know because I come from that world, so I get it. That's golden. Golden, golden. So I, you can imagine, and I was explaining this to the class where you got here this morning. I started in the industry when I was 18 years old as a mortgage person. And I owned my own mortgage business at the age of 23 years old. I started as a lender. So I had a lot of background that really came with me. So as you can imagine, when I stopped writing loans and I was only selling real estate, I was extremely picky and very particular on who that partner would be. And you have to be. You absolutely have to be. Today in class, we talked about uh, dream work or teamwork makes the dream work. And it's important that those players that you have on your home buying team understand the process. They understand what it is that you want as a customer. And their ultimate goal is to get you to that. But to be real honest with you in the entire process, it avoids so much confusion. It avoids so many other obstacles. But the the homeowner, that potential homeowner, definitely has to be picky and be choosy about who it it is that they're going to have on their home buying team. You know, you're very passionate about home ownership. And I just, I know I keep coming back to that, but I love that because, uh, you know, everybody has their story. I know you have yours. I have mine, but I, I came from a place where we did live in an apartment when I was a kid. And when my mom moved into a house, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but to her, it was really special and it was really important. And for me and the stability that I give my kids, it was really, really important as well. You know, that's something else that we talked about in class. And there was some particular participants that, you know, the reason why they want to buy a house is because they want the stability for their for for their kids. And that's important. But what's really important, too, is to make sure that we educate participants so that they can make those informed decisions. The last thing I want to see is someone get into a house not knowing that there were so many more options they could have they could have researched or at least reviewed Um, somebody that is going to take an active interest in the decisions that they make and understand those decisions that they made and they've got those players behind them that are supporting them that are those little people on their shoulders telling them hey did you you know did you ask this question did you ask for this deduction did you ask for that home warranty did you do this did you do that because at the end of the day it's just going to make them a more powerful homeowner and they're going to be able to stay in that house for 30 years seven years five years 
however long it is that they want to be in that house. It's funny. We do an initial consultation with every single one of our clients before we ever, ever, ever put a for sale sign in their yard, before we ever step foot into a home with them. And it's because I want to understand what's important to them about that process. So their reason for buying is going to be very, very different than the other person that even referred them to us. And so it's, it's super important, you know, Patricia was one of the participants in our class today, and I actually had an initial consultation with her last night, and it was interesting because she has an older daughter that's 24 years old, and it's like you see the light bulb go off, and she's like, oh my gosh, yes, if I had had a house back then, it would be almost paid off by now, and, and she she shared a story about her parents and how they ended up selling their home and end up having nothing, like no equity Nothing left at the end of the day. You know, that's the other thing we talked about, that home ownership, although it feels really good and it's supposed to be, you know, very fun and exciting and you've got this new house and all that other kind of stuff. There's a business aspect to it. And you've got to make sure that you understand that this is still a business transaction. This is most of the times it's the biggest investment that we make. I say that over, I must say, I feel like a broken record, Aisa, because I tell people all the time, your home for most people, not everybody, but for most people, it's going to be your biggest asset. It's going to be your biggest liability because it is still a liability and it's going to be your biggest monthly payment. You have to love this home. And if you don't love it, don't make an offer on it. I'll be the first one to tell people that. Exactly. You have to be real with yourself. You and you have to speak in realities, you know. Yeah, you see those things on TV that you say, oh, wow, I want this big old house. You need to get what it is that you need for you and your family, which could be totally different than the next customer that we meet. And so that's why it's important that as housing professionals, we really tune in to what that customer wants and then what they need and we focus in on what they need and then if those things that they want come along that's a blessing it's a bonus you add it into the package it's a bonus absolutely (laughs) we're really big on setting people up for success versus failure and i know a lot of times lenders can say oh we can push the envelope and we can get you qualified for this but for me it's really about setting that homeowner up to succeed and i would love their business four or five years later because they want to buy a move up home or they want to change schools or they want to do it for some other reason other than the fact that they're house poor Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, it's like Sarah said, it's being three steps ahead of your potential homeowner. And that's our job. That's our responsibility is to make sure that we are three steps ahead so that we can warn them or we can't say, hey, don't you know, don't forget to take advantage of this or don't forget to take advantage of that. Or did you think about this or for the future? Hey, look, this is what you know you're looking into. Uh, Those things are important. And I think that your customers, my customers, they value that. They do. You know, they do. And, and and it's not a customer anymore. It's like your lifelong friend. So I'm going to pick on car payments for a minute Ooh. because you said something yeah. earlier. And this is my pet peeve. It's like the thing that bothers me the most. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, we looked at a credit report and I see they have not only one car payment, but two. And it equals more than what their mortgage payment will be. Are you crazy? You know, it's so funny because I always say, mm, you're driving your house. That's it. That's all I got to say. And it's not, it's not even house. a mobile home, no pun intended. <laughs> so we have one of the people that was a participant in our home buyer workshop today. I want to have her go ahead and introduce herself and say hello. Hi, my name is Amber. Thank you so much, Amber, for joining us today on the air. Yes, I had a wonderful time today. I definitely walked away today with a lot of tools that were useful and that are going to aid me in my home buying process. And I'm looking forward to coming back next week so I can ten- continue the class. And, so what, and what was your biggest takeaway today? Like what was your A number one biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway today was probably learning debt to income ratio and what I can actually afford. <laughs> so a budget? Would it be safe to say a budget? Definitely a budget. That's like a number one. I know people hate it. Like I hated it forever. And it wasn't until I had to live on a budget that I had to freaking do a written budget. And I hated it. Right. Do I speak for you when I say the same thing? Yes, absolutely. 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 I don't even call them budgets anymore because it sounds like a bad word. I say spending plans. It has to be a spending plan. Right. We talked about this last time you were on the show. If you don't tell your money where to go. It's going to get lost and go wherever it wants it to go. It's going to go in the Walmart shopping cart. That's oh, go. oh, God. Yes. You know, or you always have, yeah, you have that story about, you know, you go to Walmart just to buy toilet paper, but you walk out with like three bags of stuff and then you forgot the toilet paper. 
<laughs> doesn't make sense. It's but amazing again, how it it's amazing how it happens. But, you know, you have to absolutely have a plan for your money. So you got to dictate where that goes. What are you looking forward to next week? What's the thing you're waiting for? Next week, I'm definitely looking forward to learning about the different kinds of loans that are offered for people that are like me in certain situations and trying to become a first time homeowner. And I'm also interested in, in learning about down payment assistance. That's a highlight of the class, which is why I think you save it for week number two. I do I do you got to come back you got got to give them something and you guys put in your home where I workshops is it once a month am I correct in saying that it is once a month two Saturdays you must attend both Saturdays they're 16 hours in length but I'm going to tell you um it's priceless information you know you come in and you enjoy the class I think and Amber can can speak on that it was yeah. laid back today's class it went by like a breeze it was my only off day I came in today I was hesitant about coming and I'm really glad that I came in I had a great time was it what you expected Expected? No and yes. Good. No and yes. What part was not expected? Because I love this. This is real. I didn't expect to feel such a one-on-one connection with the people that I'm going to be working with. Awesome. And yeah, what, what was your... Uh... What was what you expected? What was the big part there? The part that I did expect yes. was to definitely walk away. I knew I was going to walk away with some type of useful information. Is your head full? Yes. Do you feel like you want to explode? I want to explode. Then you did your job, Mama. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. We're going to open up those call-in lines here in a couple segments. The studio call-in number is 727-441-3000. You can call in and have myself or Aixa Antonio Thomas answer those home buyers home seller questions debt questions that you might have again the studio call in number is 727-441-3000 we would love to hear from you and we can also give you information about the next home buyer workshop we will be back in just a minute with another one of our participants from the show Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. This is your host, Katrina Madewell with Charles Ruttenberg Realty. Thanks so much for sticking around with us today. We have another guest in studio from our home buyer workshop today in our office. Go ahead and let's introduce yourself. Tell me your name, where you're from, and, and what was your big takeaway, your big aha from the day? Um, my name is Dangeli, and I'm from Tampa. Oh, from Tampa, Carrollwood area. Um, it's probably learning about... Um, the type of loans that are out there and what um, what you the process you have to take to go ahead and and actually get a house. It's more than you thought, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot more than I thought. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, it's a good thing because you know you're informed and you know what what to expect and what not you know, what not to worry about so much. You know, and Jelly, I always say whenever people go to buy, sell, or borrow money. It's a lot like taking a flight somewhere, right? Yeah. You may encounter turbulence. It's part of flying. There's yeah. there's no pilot that will ever promise you a turbulence free, free flight. Yeah. But what they will do is do their best to navigate around it, under it. If they have to go through it, the good pilots are going to tell you about it. Mm-hmm. And they're going to say, hey, put on your fastened seatbelt sign because you know, we have some turbulence coming up ahead. Order a cocktail if you're a little nervous. But don't worry, I'll get you there. We're still planning to land safely on time to our destination. Yeah, and I think that was that's the best part that, you know, they you guys kind of directed us to like the right place and the people that can go ahead and assist us with all the turbulence (laughs) yes that's what we do we're your pilot for the process is there anything that happened today that you didn't expect um i mean there was a lot of information um i would probably say like um probably like what to watch out for there are a lot of people out there that are only in it for the money unfortunately that's correct you would expect a realtor to like actually be there and like handle things properly and not give you the runaround but there are a lot of people out there that do that so that was probably one of the things that i didn't expect to hear i mean it's obvious that it's there but i didn't expect it right out the bat to hear that you know you have to be careful especially you know with those type of people i think our aces like me we shoot straight from the hip like yeah. like it or not we yes. kind of just say it the way that it is and you know sometimes that's the eye personalities you know they just <laughs> 
they're just uh, they're the life of the party but we just say it like it is and we're not trying to hurt anybody's feelings but we'd rather tell you the truth than tell you a lie and that's appreciated because honestly i wouldn't have never like really i guess because i'm a like i trust first which is bad it's bad and it's good but like i would have never like expected that i would have been like oh well this person's trying to help me i'm buying my first home they're gonna help me as much as they can but you also have those people that kind of just want it for now, the money. Now, refresh my memory again. Who referred you to Salita's house? Um, my cousin. Um, she went through the workshop with Salita's house? Yeah, she she went through the workshop. I, I don't, I actually don't know where she got the information from, but she w- referred me with me so well give your cousin a big hug because i'm sure you got a lot of valuable information today definitely (laughs) i'm very appreciative for you know you just you're gonna set yourself up to succeed like we talked about in the last segment it's really about empowering homeowners so that you can make good choices so that you can feel good at the end of the day based on the decisions that you made yeah definitely so. so are you looking forward to next week i am i'm actually looking forward to the second part and learning about loans and and who can help you with what um and just really getting the whole process started are we excited about home ownership now yeah i actually am i've been thinking it, it was actually scary to me to begin with but now i'm actually feeling a little bit more confident because knowledge have, will do that yeah because i have you know the right people on my side so well we thank you very much for coming in today and i thank you for being our guest in the studio and thank you feel free to <laughs> hang around with us till we get to the next segment you know i just i took my general notes because again i'm kind of jaded so i i went over just basics that people ask that are stuff that i don't think about because i already know it I can do it in my sleep, right? You find yourself doing the same thing? Yes, yes. At least you get the workshop so you get the questions regularly so you can probably spit the FAQs out better than me. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, sometimes I get stuck and what happens is is that the market changes. It things does. go on. And that's why it's important that we have all those professionals. You know, I always tell my class, I don't sell homes. I don't do mortgages. And when I don't know something, I go and ask. And that's what I want my participants to do as well. If you don't know, you ask and you continue to ask until you understand that concept. And, you know, for Dangeli, it was funny because when we first started class, Frankie really wanted to buy a house. And then Jelly was like, well, yeah, yeah, I think so. And then now she's super excited about home ownership. And we love that. So, and we absolutely love it. That's and why we do what we do. That, it is. And the fact that you've got information, but now you also have those resources. So, you know, even when you walk away from class with your certificate next week and you have another question and you get stuck, you know who to call. Yeah. You know, definitely. to get those answers. You can text us or tweet us. I'm going to give you our show call in number again. The studio line call in to get your questions answers is 727 441 3000. Again, feel free to call our studio to get your questions answered 727 441 3000. And we're happy to answer your questions also via our social media channels. You can find us pretty much everywhere qu- across the web at tampahometalk.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter to search for Tampa Home Talk. So I'm going to give you a little quick quiz and we'll, we'll help you out. It's no worries. <laughs> so let, I want to see how many things you remember about, cause I saw the class light up when we talked about this. And I think this is an important part. It's probably one of the most important things you talked about today. What are some of the upfront expenses, the things that you have to pay for out of pocket before you ever even get the home? Like you're getting ready to go through the mortgage process. I think it's the appraisal. Very good. Ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> and um, the appraisal is one of those expenses that you're going to pay to a third party for services rendered. So you're exactly correct. You're going to have an appraisal fee. What else? There's usually something that comes ahead of that. Um, the inspection. The home inspection. Ding, 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 ding. Huge, 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 huge. I'm a big advocate of home inspections. Me and it's, too. It's not that I'm a home inspector, but I will tell you, I've been to thousands of home inspections. And when our partner, Jody, and she works here with us at Tampa Home Talk, when she bought her home, I said, look, this is a good home. I can tell you by looking at it, it's a good home. So I just kind of did a quick walkthrough. She still got the inspection, but I said, here's what I think the inspe- inspector is going to call out. This, 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 everything except for open the electrical box. I didn't do that. And I didn't crawl on the roof and I didn't crawl in the attic. (laughs) But outside of that, I was pretty spot on with some of the stuff. And and I'll be that agent to tell you, let's find you a different home because this one's not a good one. It's important. Big, big, big piece. You don't pay for anything else. Pay for that inspection. 
What else? Can you remember anything else? Mm, I kind of blanked out after that. What about when you go to make an offer? Do you need any money to put in paperwork? Um, yeah, the application fee. It's actually the earnest money deposit or the escrow deposit. Okay. And do you know why they asked for that? Like, why would, why would a realtor like me ask you for an escrow or a good faith or an earnest money deposit? Take, take your best guess. Cause I don't think we talked about this. Any idea? To secure the loan. That's part of it. They want to, let's, let's change it around. Let's pretend that you are selling the home mm-hmm. and you have a buyer that's made an offer on your house. Would you want them to see, to make a good faith deposit, to see that they're serious? Oh, yeah. And they're interested okay, in buying yeah. your home? Yeah. So that's why we ask for a good faith escrow deposit. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, people would be running around town making offers for no reason. We wouldn't even know if they're approved. And, you know, as realtors, we actually have to follow a very strict code of ethics. And okay. the part of the code of ethics to our sellers is that we won't be chucking people in and out of their house that are not approved to buy. Yeah. And, you know, if this is your first home, we've never experienced that. But have you sold a home before? No, I so? okay. I haven't. So let me tell you what the seller goes through. I'm just giving you a quick little snapshot in like less than 30 seconds. Whenever you got to sell a home, okay, we have to make that transition from a home to a house, which means we have to take all of your pictures off the wall. We have to really just get it ready to sell, which is very different in the way you live in it. It's different in the way I live in my house. It's different than the way anybody lives in their house. But not only that, we're going to kick you out of your house. We're going to say, take the dogs, take the kids, get out. We need the buyers to open the pantry. We need the buyers to look into the kitchen sink. We need the buyers to peek in your closet because if they're interested, that's what they're going to be doing. Yeah. And if you're selling, you're selling for a reason. You want a larger, more spacious home. You want to move to the bank or to the bank, to the beach, (laughs) whatever those things are that you're doing, there's a reason why. And so it's not to be mean. It's not to let the buyer be nosy. It's because they're genuinely interested in your home. So that's part of the reason why they ask for an escrow deposit. What else? Aisa. Uh, How about when you finally close? Who's got to help you move? The movers. Right. (laughs) And there's a cost associated to that. So we've got to be mindful to make sure that even if you don't, even if you don't hire movers, even if you don't hire movers, I mean, if I was your cousin, I'm still going to charge you something, whether it's a slice of pizza yeah. or you're going to have to cook for me or well, something. Well, you would feel bad if you didn't buy your cousin some pizza exactly. and some beer or something. Right. So, so, yeah, you still have to associate with there's deposits. You know, if you've never made a water um, payment right. before, you're going to have to pay a water deposit. Electricity, well, sometimes, too, transfer fees. sometimes you change areas. So you might be in Tampa Electric, but when you move, you might be Florida Power and Light. Absolutely. And so you don't have any history of rapport with Florida Power and Light. You now have to show them or Duke Absolutely. Energy or any of them. There's a million of them, but you can very well move out of that area and, and have to make those deposits. Yep. Yep. So there's a lot of other information that we went into today. And I know Sarah talked a lot about loan programs and that type of stuff. And we went over area median income, median incomes and income guidelines and all that stuff. But, you know, some of the br- the great programs and I, unfortunately it's not available in Pinellas. But, you know, if you can live in Pasco or you work from home or, or Hillsboro or something like that to commute for you. USDA rural housing maps are a great program. Great program. There's no mortgage insurance on those. So let's talk about mortgage insurance for just a second, because mm. we may have covered that, but it might have been when I stepped out. Did you talk about mortgage insurance? We didn't really cover mortgage insurance today. We're going to cover it on next Saturday when we talk about the different type of loan programs. But it's important to so understand. Let's, let's say what the, the homeowners usually think or the buyers think that mortgage insurance is their homeowner's insurance. And it's not. It's not the same thing at all. It absolutely is not. It's totally different. Mortgage insurance will protect the lender, not necessarily the homeowner. Not at all the homeowner. However, there are some, like with FHA, there are some um, options that if you find yourself in um, a situation where you can't make your mortgage payment, your mortgage insurance, um, if it's an FHA loan, will actually allow you to do partial claim. 
Okay, so what's a partial claim? A partial claim is basically when the mortgage insurance company will front you, let's say, whatever it is that you're behind. So if you're two months behind on your mortgage payment, the mortgage insurance will lend you the two months in order to get you back current. And then you have to pay that at zero interest rate at the end of your 30-year loan. So there are options, but it's only in those emergency cases. Mm -hmm. Um, But you have to, again, like we talked about in class, you have to figure out what's best for your family and your income situation. Because FHA may not fit everybody's um, income situation. Right. So, you and know, and they've you raised the to, rates over the oh, last several years. The mortgage insurance yeah, rates have it's, tripled. It's really, really high. So now where we thought in the past, oh, everybody was doing FHA. So well, like the interest rate, uh, the down payment requirement is so low. I mean, on a hundred thousand dollar loan, look, for example, and I'm, we'll have to get with the lender if you want exacts, but before those mortgage insurance premiums were, you know, you might pay 40 bucks a month yeah. for PMI. And Not now, anymore. Mm-hmm. Now on a hundred thousand dollar loan, I think that's more like one hundred and twenty five bucks. It's something. It's, it's like pretty. That. It's in that neighborhood. So you have to take in consideration your total mortgage payment. So now your mortgage payment is increasing, which allows for less house. So again, it's one of those things, and we talked about it in class. Is you know what is your best case scenario for your particular situation? FHA may not be, and it may be a different type of product, but you've got to know what's best for you. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, and this is your host, Katrina Madewell. We have to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to one other participant from our home buyer workshop. And before we end the show, we're actually going to get into some of the great programs that Salita's House has available for consumers. So if you're listening right now and you have maybe some debt or something you're trying to clear up, you want to build credit, stick around because we've got some great information coming your way. Be back in just a minute. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. Thanks for sticking around with us today. Uh, we've got a last little bit of information here in our last segment that I want to give you. So Lita's House has done some amazing things, and a lot of this stuff has just come about within the last year, correct? Yes, yes. So let's talk about your debt collection rebuilder program. Oh, wow. I'm excited about that. So um, in Tampa, we actually applied for um, a grant with CDFI, which is Community Development uh, Financial Institution. And so what we're going to do is we're working on a program to help consumers um, reestablish their credit. So it's called a credit builder loan. It's for $150. So the skinny of it is this. You make a loan with us for $150. And so we open a savings checking account in Salida's house name and in your name. You make a monthly payment into that account of $12.50 for 12 months. Every single month that you make that payment, we report it to the credit bureaus. So it's being reported to your credit bureaus as an active, positive account. After 12 months, we give you... Uh, $125. We charge a $25 fee and you've had good credit report history for 12 months. And what is that the same program as the one that if you don't have any credit score and you need to rebuild? Same thing. Okay. Absolutely. We don't, we will look at your credit. We're at the beginning when you apply, we're going to pull your credit report, but your credit report is not the do or die as to whether or not we do this loan for you. Um, it's what's called a social lending aspect or a character loan. We really want to know um, what type of person are you? Uh, do you pay your bills? Are you structured with your budget? Are you trying to save? And then we're going to help you to do those things before we get you into this character loan. Because the last thing we want you to do is to fail at it. So we're going to make sure that you can successfully do it for 12 months before we put you in it. And budgets are huge again. But let's go back to your emergency loan because that's okay. a great option too okay. for people that are already homeowners. Absolutely. So let's say that the refrigerator goes out and you still have bad credit for whatever reason, or you don't 
to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or anybody else and apply for a credit card with extremely high interest rates. You can absolutely come to Salida's house. You can apply for an emergency loan. Um, it's at a small interest rate. I think the interest rate is anywhere between 7 and 9%, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then it comes with small payments. It sure payments. beats 25. It should be 25. It, sure, it says sure beats 25. Oh, yes. It absolutely beats 25%. Um, and then you can go out and get your refrigerator. Um, and then you just make monthly payments to us. And again, we report to the credit bureaus. And so it's improving your credit score. Um, it's helping you to maintain your credit score or it's helping you to reestablish your credit. It's that emergency thing that you need in the event that something happens. The last thing we want you to do is to go into foreclosure because you had, you know, a refrigerator repair or an AC repair or some other repair that, you know, you didn't make accommodations for by doing an emergency savings plan. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, and this is your host, Katrina Madewell, Charles Ruttenberg Realty. You can catch up with us across the web at TampaHomeTalk.com or on Facebook or Twitter at Tampa Home Talk. I want to give a shout out to my little daughter today, my littlest boo bear. She's turning eight, and I promised her that I would tell her happy birthday on the air. And she was they were in studio with us last week. We're on a different network, so we're really happy to have changed over to Tan Talk, and I think it's going to be a great opportunity for us. Aisa, any closing thoughts for today's show? I think we had a fantastic class. Absolutely, I did. I'm so excited. You know, this is my passion, so I can't wait for next Saturday to come. I love to see when um, our customers open their eyes and they're like so excited about the information and they're writing all over every single paper that they can find because they're taking notes. Um, So I'm excited for next week and then I'm excited to see all these new homeowners that we produce. Thank you. You are welcome. Real quick, this is Katrina Madewell, Tampa Home Talk. I want to leave you with our office number. We'll be happy to connect you with Salita's house, 813-936-2302. Again, this is Katrina Madewell with Tampa Home Talk. Grab your pen and paper real quick or hand that phone to the person in the passenger seat and text our, take down our number. We can call us on this number, 813-936-2302. 2302. We'll be happy to connect you with Salita's house so you can also get some home buyer workshops. Real quick, we got like 30 seconds. The financial workshop. Financial workshop. We have one coming up this week. You save $1,000, we give you $1,000. Can't be that. Call the office to get information. 813-936-2302. We'll be happy to connect you with Salita's house. Thanks so much for joining us today. And we'll be back next Saturday and Thursday at 5 p.m. We are out.